Okay, so it's my great pleasure to introduce our second speaker of this afternoon. It's Peter Ahn from the University of Düsseldorf. Um, Peter has a broad range of interests, ranging from Hopatomy theory over infinity categories to categorical logic. In fact, our last point of contact was in Vichy, where he organized the workshop on categories and logic as part of the Unilog Congress. And now I'm very happy to hear about his recent results in logic. Enjoy. Thank you. So, the title is here, Ranges of Functions in Elementary Classes via Focus Theory. The Focus Theory part is reserved for the very end. We get it all there. That's the proof of the result. So, I want to address the following kind of situations. If we have two first order theories, and we have well, then we have their models. And let's suppose we have a construction from T models to S models. Where by construction I mean a functor. So it's also working on the homomorphisms of models. Then uh, we can ask questions like the following. Is, is every B of the type f of A for some A here? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, or how to characterize the image f of A in there? So, and for example, I could ask, is this image of f in here, is it axiomatizable by, by other first order spaces? Uh, and, well, whether this is the case or not, I always ask, what is the elementary class generated by this image? <coughs> by this I mean uh, the models, of, well, the intersection or the theories of things in the image. Right. So we have, well, what are, the, what are the structures in here, the S, well, the structures of the language of S satisfy exactly all the first order theorems or first order statements that are valid for things in the image. Yeah, I mean, and ask whether this elementary class is actually a proper subset. So that would mean, can we distinguish uh, general S models from ones coming from here by some first order formula? So uh, I'll give two examples. And of course, there are many more. There's lots of questions in this slide. Here's the one that. that motivated me to start this whole thing and to uh, the working on. I won't go into too much details. So there's a structure called special groups, which is a horrible name. Uh, so these are certain structures signature was just a multiplication symbol, binary operation, and ternary relation that I call plus. And what you do is you take a field, and let's call it this. And you produce a group, maybe the root of square classes of the field. I mean, it's, this, these details are not really important, but that's something I'm working on. That's really so this plus should be the shadow of the addition of this field. Mm -hmm. It's, well, what I'm taking here is just the units and then modulo the squares, and these squares are not generally uh, an ideal anything, for it's a field, they are not ideals, really. But I can still record what is the graph of the addition, and yeah, that would be a relation on the field, mm -hmm. and then, uh, 
one out of squares, and then intersect it with these the units. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a thing you can do when you have a field, produce the structure, and it sort of codifies the theory of quadratic forms of this field. And that's why I'm interested in I mean, to be slightly more precise, a quadratic form can always, up to, up to certain local equivalence, is always given by a diagonal matrix. And you can change these entries up to squares, which is why we are here. And so sequences of elements in here sort of give you a quadratic form. And the kind of things you ask about quadratic forms are like asking things about this. Okay, special groups are. are uh, First order structure defined a little by the signature, and where you axiomatize what kinds of things these these constructions satisfy. Uh, so the question is from the seventies. Back then it was about not special groups but something else, but it's equivalent. Uh, does every special group come to you? So. Whether everything here is isomorphic or something coming from there. Well, nobody knows. And uh, another question that people ask is: Is every special group uh, elementary equivalent to something coming from the field? Mm -hmm. So this letter uh, question sort of has a practical aspect. It sort of is asking whether we have characterized, whether they have found the best axioms for special groups. Have we really found all the first order axioms that we can impose here? Because if we are missing out on one, then we could improve the theory. And capture better what, what fields are like and conclude more things about special groups. Mm -hmm. Special groups are, are, have been very valuable in solving some auto conjectures and quadratic forms. So, yeah. Also, there's actually in reality a whole family of questions like this because you can massage those sides here that so called reduced special groups or proto special groups and restrict this to Pythagorean fields or whatnot. Okay, another uh, example. Would be Dilworth's lattice problem. Structure with an order. You can also present this in a tri structure with uh, infimum supremum one, maybe. And then, well, as an tri structure, we know what congruence is. These are equivalence relations such that on the quotient these uh, operations are still well defined. Uh, well, it's equivalent to look at at the, at the this quantum is to distribute semi lattices, sub semi lattices, and to just look at the compact congruence relations that you know, those operate by finding many elements. Usually, one looks at the latter nowadays, so you can produce one of these from the other and vice versa. So, um, question by Was is every distributive symmetry for you this or for in this case it was still the first one of this form? And the congress is for some letters. This was really this is from the 40s. And this was really a driving force of lattice theory, apparently. I don't know lattice theorists, but this seems to be been a very important question. Uh, around which they developed a lot of theory. So Dilworth himself proved that every finite distributive symbol lattice is of this form. And 
and later on the wing proved that actually every distributed uh, subnet is kind of smaller input than uh, Aleph 1 is of this form. Aleph's are. You know what I mean? Until then, V will answer the question. It said no. Uh, starting at Aleph 2, we have conquered now. <laughs> We will produce a counter example at uh, cardinality Aleph omega plus one, and then two more show that Aleph two is in. Uh -huh. All within standard set of C? Yes. Uh -huh. There's nothing constructive in this talk, uh, although the proof at the end probably has constructive content. Okay, yeah. I, but, but also, in particular, no like generalized continuum hypothesis is, is quite just I don't know. standard set of C. As far as I know, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll have two, sorry, I'll have two. Uh, <coughs> so this in particular implies that uh, the lexus of this form cannot be first order exhibitized because if I if I had to, well, if, if, if this was the case, I could take a counter example of cardinality Aleph 2 and then apply with my scoring, morph it down, then I'm lower cardinality, then it would have to then it wouldn't be in the image, and we have to satisfy all the first order sentences satisfied by congruence, compact congruence lattices of lattices. Right. So this goes to show that the question can have both kinds of answers. Of course, there's also cases where you have first order simultaneous of this learning. And the first question, that answer is also known? No, no, it's why all. Okay. okay. So uh, I work on this kind of thing with uh, Hugo Mariano from Sao Paulo, and he, that's really his area, the special rules for reforms theory. And he knows the big shots of the area, and he says uh, that the, the tendency uh, to, is to believe that probably not every special group comes really from a field, it's isomorphic such a thing, but probably yes, yeah. every special group is elementary equivalent to one coming from a field. Okay. But it also might be undecided. That's what they Okay. So this is the kind of question that I want to address with the result I present. But it's not exactly about first order theories as we know them. It's about a finitary logic. So let's take the usual first order signature. Uh, function symbols and relation symbols, and then we can form an infinitary language and an infinity kappa over the signature, and that's a language with arbitrary conjunctions, arbitrary disjunctions. Uh, We have uh, quantification over sets of variables of cardinality smaller than alpha, and the same with, with exists. And of course, we have the usual things. I mean, we have a find the end or implies not. Yeah, that's the language. And there's some fragments that we can look at. Uh, do I really have to address the form formulas? Actually, it's really a fragment. <laughs> and there are the so-called couple geometric formulas. If you know topos theory, then you know geometric formulas, I guess. And this is a generalization. So these are the ones 
with arbitrary set index disjunctions. And we have uh, conjunctions over sets of cardinalities more than kappa. And also existence quantifications about such things. <coughs> So, transformers are, well, uh, cover geometric forms are built from uh, atomic formulas with these operations at the bottom. And cover geometric theories. And then an implication. And this two should be coupled to it. It's a bit strange to, to allow these axioms for a theory, but uh, the background is that you really use a, a sequence calculus for this, and this is just some things sitting on the two sides of the sequence. And then yeah, you just say you want sequence with a couple of geometric formulas in there. Okay. <coughs> so that's <laughs> sort of what I mean by first order theory. That's the kind of thing I meant to read there. And so to state my result. I have to introduce the notion of accessible category. Take some time doing that. I'm slightly surprised by the infinite conjunctions, but you say we have them, yeah? You mean in this language? In the Kappa geometric language. Well, well conjunctions of Kappa is more than Kappa. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. If you think about you, you were there at Christian yes. talking mm -hmm. more, more. If you think about what uh, yeah. geometric theories are, you okay. know yeah. that the left and right preserves kappa limits and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, a bunch of definitions. These are so these are just three definitions from pure category theory. So, a diagram, meaning a diagram in some category consisting of objects and in arrows between them, is called a number directory. Well, for every set of objects in this diagram, uh, of cardinality smaller than lambda, there is some cone where they all match. So there is a Z and you know, let's, let's put a web all around these and test it here. Uh, zero plus I. So all of these can be simultaneously mapped somewhere to some other object on top of it. Okay? Uh, so, what's the point of, of this kind of diagram? So, the yeah, counterexample would be I just two parallel arrows on this. This is not something, so I, I would have uh, this. Oh, wait, that's no, probably even actually better. Well, whatever. I mean, I just want to always go beyond and have every pair of objects or every lambda couple of objects or smaller than lambda. 
be able to manage or something like that. So, just to tell you something, why, for example, these might be interesting, uh, interesting class of diagrams. Categories of finitary first order structures. I'm not sure about others. Uh, these are the kinds of diagrams. Yeah? If I have a diagram of first order structures, so I have Now that's, that's how they look like, you can always go on. The coding of such a thing is computed by taking the union of all these occurring sets here. Yeah? If, if these are all first order structures. Uh, union meaning I identify elements which come from here with their addition to the next thing. And I have to give a new uh, structure, uh, first order structure to this, they have the same language. So the functions are defined as this. If I, if I want to, let's say we have a binary addition, if I want to add something from here or something from here, then I just put in the next common target and then I add them there. Because this, this is a summary from case where I have addition defined. And if I have relation symbols, yeah, I just take the unions along all of these arrows here. So really, uh, these, these columns of, of directed diagrams, they are just constructed by taking the underlying sets and just throwing them together. So they are easy in the sense. Uh, okay, so... Second, there's a notion of lambda presentable object. Exactly what it means. So for a finitely presentable group A, if I map it to such a column, uh, my map is completely determined by where I send the generators. And since this is a union, every generator has to go into some stage. Yeah, and then these finitely many generators, well, they, they sit somewhere, the images sit somewhere in these, in these stages here, and I just can map them to a common object. So Really, my, my map into the school limit comes from a map into something on the, on the middle here. And that's really something here. So there's this little d, which sits inside my diagram, and that's actually where, where, where I map to. And for lambda directed? Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. for, for bigger lambdas than, than, than R0, you can make the same definition. And I don't really know any step examples now. <laughs> Something, uh, yeah, lambda. I mean, for algebraic structures, is, the, the notion is the same. So, I, uh, an RLF1 presentable group would be one with less than RLF1 generators and less than RLF1 relations. Also, relations are something that arises here. Yeah, I assume it's a group for this diagram. Yeah. Okay. So, For my special groups that I mentioned, but didn't really define, uh, finitely presentable means really finite. 
You can see it for fields maybe. We have this here, it's star maybe x star squared. So it's a, it's a Abelian group in which every element is ordered to. This thing should be fine, it's presentable, it's just fine. Of course, there's still the relation, but that doesn't change the fact. <coughs> and in fields, if you, if you want to know that, in fields, finite and presentable would mean uh, you have uh, fields of finite transcendence degree of prime field uh, plus the finite algebraic extent. Mm -hmm. So this notion is, is a general notion of categories, but it makes concrete sense in most cases. So may I come back to before you erase this? Uh, yes. To the kappa geometric formulas. If kappa is always normal, what do you get? You get finite disjunctions, finite conjunctions, you probably have. Yes, then we get exactly geometric formulas in the sense of topos theory. So yeah, this this part can can go away, and these are just usual uh, systemic identification for one-way divariate. So we don't have any restriction on the disjunctions. Yes. Distinction this, can always the, be indexed by any set. The high distinction is only on the conjunction. Yes. And on the, <coughs> the existential. So this means finite conjunctions, finite by extensions are finite anyway, and arbitrary disjunctions. Arbitrary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Arbitrary. Set index. So set index. It's, it's, it's way beyond. It's not the one we have in proof theory. We have on the counter disjunction. Yeah. It's more general. Yeah. yeah. That would probably be L RF1 R1 if you want to do something like that. Yeah. But that's the infinity that is always present because of the this disjunction. Okay. <coughs> around this uh, lambda directed, lambda presentable notions, and that's lambda accessible category. I'll just find it first and then give you uh, Intuitions and examples. So the category is not accessible if there is a set. And set means set, yeah. Categories are often have classes of objects, but here's a set of lambda presentable objects in this sense. Um, and then every other object is a lambda directed co limit of those. controlled by, by a set of objects and everything else is assembled from these by columns. So example, any category of, of algebraic structures is of this kind. Let's say category of groups. That's R of zero accessible. And it's actually a uh, yeah, lambda accessible for every lambda. Why? Because every group has a presentation uh, by some generators or some set X, one with some relations, some load model subgroup. And I can just take finite subsets of these generators and then build a huge uh, co limit diagram where I just take the inclusion of these finite subsets of generators and all the relations between those that hold. So G is the 
co-limit of well I take the finite power set of these generators x, and I guess I should also should somehow take the finer subsets of the generator of this mode subgroup, but <coughs> let's be lenient about this. And then I take f, oh sorry, f of a modulo whatever relation so between those. Yeah, this will again be, I mean, this, this uh, finite subset of a big set, they form a lambda direct diagram, all the inclusion spheres. And this will be something of this kind. Yeah, let's have growing sets here. And the co limit will, will uh, in the end, gather all the elements of my group G, because in the end, I have everything from X occurs. So that's that's the reason why, for example, groups are uh, either zero accessible or not accessible for anything, and that's the case for every algebraic structure. It's just filtering by gender rings. Well, fields are are zero accessible. Well, because every field can be constructed by uh, some some transcendental extension and then some algebraic extension and that's yeah you just these are sort of the generators and you just again put them in the, the diagram like this. Um, here's a theorem and I don't know who to attribute to who to, to attribute to but Makai Paré is probably a good guess I don't know. Uh, if I have a usual Unitary first order theory, as we are used to, over a, a countable signature. Then the category of models of T is out of one exception. <coughs> so we are not very restrictive here. This is, uh, whole huge class of things from my game system. Well, there's further uh, theories that, for example, I can take uh, a possibly infinitary first order theory and take a category of all models and elementary embeddings, just that's a, an accessible category, although the, the lambda is not so clear then. And so the, it's a bit of a mystery which Categories are all of zero accessible. There's no classification, it's not a problem. There's just a sufficient criteria. in these kinds of things, but it's probably also Makai Paré, I think so. Uh, well, that every accessible capture, for lambda accessible for some lambda, is of the form models of T for some first order theory T. Not with necessarily countable signature, yeah? Um, I don't think so. Because else it would then, after the fact, automatically be kappa 1 accessible. Yeah, accessible means accessible for some lambda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think signature can. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yeah. So. Every 
couple accessible categories. That's maybe also more category in the end. Is of the form what he for some counter theory. Mm. I mean, if you know these notions, public social categories are exactly the cover int completions of small categories and these couple incompletions are the same as flat functors from that small categories, couple flat functors. Couple flat functors are the same as left the joints from set to the something, and that's the customer. Well, then I have task functors for this category. So I don't even know where it comes from. Okay, then I think we are ready to state my result. It's been faster than I thought, but it's time for questions. <laughs> so the the first order theories are the are the union of all kappa geometry theories, the kappa ranges over kappa. Uh, which fields are the union? I'm, I'm just uh, I'm trying to put into a, a common framework the two theories. So the accessible categories are the kappa accessible category for an arbitrary kappa. Is that correct? Yeah, for some yes, kappa. Yes, yes, yes. For some kappa, mm -hmm. and the same for the first order theories. They are the kappa geometric theories for some kappa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, you know, yeah. Maybe this one is a bit. We didn't really have to state it. <laughs> Corollary of the theory. Uh, that's true. I, I sort of I had something else here. You can give this theory a. So it forms a basic theory, sort of a basic theory. What do you mean by that? But the first yeah. one is, is still geometric, right? Or... This one, no. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's another, another form. There's normal forms of these theories that you can give. But actually, uh, yeah, I now regret having written this at all because <laughs> I left away the basic as I wrote it. And I didn't go it at all. This is what, I, what like, throws a light on the next result, I think. So what's the basic theory? Uh, we can just look <laughs> it up. Or just the idea. Just try. Hmm. You don't remember we can talk about that. Yes, yes, we are, it's fair to ask. It's not an appropriate homepage. So here's my theorem. It's a bit unwieldy. It's, it's a rare example of a statement that is much uglier than the proof. <laughs> Everybody knows the contrary, like a four color theorem or something. But this is, yeah, I mean, it looks horrible. And the proof is very nice, in my opinion. And actually, when I think about applications of this, I rather just think about the proof. That's <laughs> right. Use the proof to apply this. But okay, uh, let's give ourselves a lambda set of the cats, and they should be degrees of models <coughs> of well, without any loss of general, we can say. Uh, couple of geometric theories. Mm -hmm. And in here, um, we can look at the subcategories of couple presentable objects. Functor. 
and it preserves the couple-presentable uh, objects. It restricts to these subcategories. Target category is uh, isomorphic to something in the image. That's now equivalent to this equality of theories. Yeah, let's uh, ponder part A maybe first a bit for having a blackboard with more horrible statements. So, what is an idle completion of categories? Spaces. This is then uh, always given by a projection and then back into inclusion into the object space. And that's what it, what it means to say that E splits if uh, E is well projection to some some object and then. And idempotent completion, so me, well, I can categorize idempotent complete if every idempotent splits in this way, every idempotent com corresponds to sort of a direct summon of this our object. And if our category is not idempotent complete, we can create an idempotent complete to just fill it up with all the objects that we would need to make an idempotent split. Well, 
construction, but yeah, let's, let's do an example before I go on the theorem, the statement. Uh, so example for this situation. Let's take the category of groups for B. And for A, I take what I would like to take would, would be just the uh, free group on M generators. But that's not an accessible category, I've completed all the stuff. So uh, I take the model of the geometric theory, meaning R of zero geometric, of free group on N generators. Let's call this F N. Yeah, and I have just the inclusion functor here from this to this. Uh, clearly this will preserve five presentable groups. I mean that's is is that A the category of Groups which happen to be elementarily equivalent to that free group? Well, geometrically equivalent. Ge uh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Okay, yeah, good, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So, this, uh, in, there was a problem by uh, Tarski from the 1945 asking whether all three finite generated groups have the same elementary theory. Mm -hmm. It was a hard problem which remained open for a long time and then was uh, solved by. Karl Lankovich and Yasnikov and independently Seller. And the answer is yes. The, the usual first order elementary theory of, of uh, three groups are the same for all numbers of generators. Mm -hmm. Usual first order language cannot distinguish the number of generators here. Theories uh, of all finally generated free groups are equivalent. This was a huge amount of work. So in 100 pages, they developed sort of an algebraic geometry of groups based on groups instead of rings. And in the end, they achieved this. When was this achieved, approximately? 2000s. I don't know. It's not long ago. 2008 okay. <laughs> or so. Wow. Yeah, all of these people are alive and not mm -hmm. old. Yeah. So um, now, so this shows you that, that there's something not trivial about uh, well asking which which first order sentences are, are satisfied by three groups. Uh, well, there's nothing more trivial about this question in L omega infinity, uh, infinity omega. There we can distinguish the number of generators because we can just write this sentence as x1 to xn such that for all of y, then we this junction by, uh, sorry, uh, the w ranging over the words, and this is i. Mm -hmm. Now we can just say this sort of expresses uh, that there's n elements such that I can express any other element as a word in those. Mm -hmm. Meaning, so I have I don't need more than n generators. Of course, with this sentence, I can distinguish uh, three groups of different generators. But now, uh, this is not a geometric sentence. There's a for all after the exist. That's not allowed. And now, we have the position, the application of this uh, theorem, the, the global part. Um, the different types of generated free groups. 
also has uh, different geometric theories. Why is that? Okay, I have to uh, look at the idempotent enclosure of this, just this single three U1 generators. And what new objects appear in this idempotent enclosure? Well, definitely there are all these groups with less generators because they can just project all generate this to, to a subset of them, then I get a group. But if I do this again, then nothing changes. That's an idempotent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I can do this all these one to fn. And that is all. <coughs> uh, why? Because, of course, in the idempotent closure, I get subgroups. Then an idempotent element will produce a subgroup of fn. But subgroups of free groups are free again. It's also not so easy theorem. And of course, they will have uh, less or equal than n generators because they are, they are the image of something with n generators. So this is exactly what appears here. And now, uh, for different for, uh, free groups of different sizes, we get different idempotent closures. And so there must be these have different geometric theories. write down a, an actual geometric sentence, which it seems just these. I have no idea. Uh -huh. and I've thought about it, and I've given this talk once before to a bunch of monotheists, and they all, at this point, started thinking, wait a moment, can you just write down one? And, no. Well, so they couldn't. Maybe you can. I would think it's <laughs> Yeah, let's, uh, let's pause this talk for five hours to <laughs> <laughs> think about that. Uh-huh. Okay, and your proof is non-constructive, yeah? It's not constructive. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> what this? Here? Well, here's so here's another example, maybe, of still more of this essentially subjective part, the easier form of the statement. On that ring time, well. So remember the statement here. Oh, wait, I just move over there. It's nothing to do with I don't have reach anymore. So here is. Uh, remember this lattice problem, congruence lattice problem by the real Let's distribute the same lattices. Same lattice compact, compact congruence. So this, as you can, if I'm not uh, mistaken about this, it preserves uh, our one presentable object. Maybe this is a fever dream. <laughs> yeah, I didn't check it then. Uh, now there's a theorem of room that I told you that uh, every RF1, uh, every distributive semblance of, of canality RF1 is in the image of this functor, right? So RF1 presentable objects are definitely, oh, uh, well, actually these are the same. So RF1 presentable objects 
do have finality more than other one more than two. And then the corollary by this uh, part A of the theorem would be uh, there's no oops. one geometric formula <coughs> and the general distributive sample lattices from one of the form compact components of another lattice. Okay, there's no but it's set is objective on, on these Aleph one and the objects. And that's also, we can, can start writing down formulas like this, you will not easily come to a conclusion whether it doesn't exist. And that's, that's a way. Okay, let me conclude my statement of the theorem. There's a part B. So, the hypothesis are always about these restricted functors to the to the couple presentable objects. Um, if the functor is fully faithful, then okay, we'll do something about the whole image here. Namely, it is now axiomatizable by first order sentences inside. Yeah, so, this was about category B. So, I can take the same signature and take some geometric formulas, a uh, couple of geometric formulas, and axiomatize the central image like this. By additional axioms, I can take those and then some more. This is something containing an axiom. And why did there be plus? But additionally, to, to this fully faithfulness here, uh, every object in the target category B. Uh, actually, a couple of presentable ones. And this is a map to something of the image. Uh, sorry, to something of the image. B uh, satisfy exactly the same negations of geometric formulas as uh, <laughs> as the F of A's. <laughs> so generally, I was talking about geometric sequence. Yeah, these were these locations of, between two geometric formulas. Now I'm talking about ones where the second one is bottom. This is the uh, negation of geometric formulas valid in the image are in the same as the negation of geometric formulas valid for general objects of B. It's a bit bizarre, <laughs> but that's what it is. And actually, the, the other, I have a further application to this, to these uh, special groups. But looking at the time, I'm just not to say it anymore. But it is this unit of new result of this question on special groups. So, namely, this is the case here. Somebody proved, or Sigmund Miralia proved, that every general special group can be in, mapped to one uh, coming from the field. And so that tells us if we are looking for a distinction in the in this case, it is uh, Kappa's RF1 again. If we are looking for a distinction 
uh, they do not need to look among the negations of couple geometric formulas. Okay, so just for the end, I will now uh, give you a sketch proof of this. And for this whole uh, theorem, I used Topos theory. And this, uh, they make this uh, five minutes or like four minutes for the people who know Topos. <laughs> <laughs> I will be a bit quick about this. So that's the word of toposes, this is a kind of category. And the logical topological space uh, can be made into a topos and letting it the topos of three from that space <coughs> with respect to the usual topology. Yeah, so that was actually the original motivating example, I guess. And this is actually a functor, so a continuous map f from x to y induces a morphism of topologies. And these morphisms are, are defined in such a way that they exactly are those that come from geometric from, from uh, continuous maps in the case of spaces. So what is the notion of geometric morphism? That's uh, in a junction with a finite limit preserving left joint. Left to join is if upper star was the wrong way. Okay, so another source of hypothesis on geometric theories, and actually also kappa geometric theories, that's a fairly recent work by Christian Spindola. And, well, I have such a theory, I send it to classifying topos. Whatever that may be. I'll, I'll tell you about its uh, neural property. Okay, so this, this codification of topological spaces by the sheaf toposes is pretty good. If the space is reasonable, meaning technically meaning sober, then I can reconstruct the whole space from the toposes. It's really very faithful and uh, if, this, if these spaces are, are reasonable, then Every geometric morphism comes from a continuous map. Can we reconstruct it? Now, in topological spaces, I can factorize any continuous map as a selection. Just taking this image, of course, uh, followed by a dense embedding. So then I take just the closure of the image in Y, followed by a closed embedding. And uh, it's a fact, and it's a remarkable fact that the same factorization works among, for geometric morphisms among arbitrary topos, not just these sheaf topos. So for this to make sense, you have to say what subjective, dense, and closed means, actually, for, for arbitrary geometric models. Well, there are such notions. I mean, not only can you reconstruct these maps, you can also like codify properties of these maps by, by properties of this adjoint pair. So for example, um, subjective means that f upper star is faithful. Not that it's important now, but just to see what kind of thing comes up here. And there's a notion of embedding, meaning embedding of a, of a subspace to a subspace topology. And embedding is the same as f lower star is fully faithful. And these dense and closed embeddings are a bit unreal to define, so we don't. Okay, what can I do with this? Uh, so 
as I said, the same kind of factorization in, in geometric models with these kind of properties works for every torus. And so we do this for class one now. And what what's the matter with classifying purposes? They have the following uh, property. So there's a model known of kappa geometric morphism. This is this is what I call geometric morphism. I've just asked for the left adjoint to preserve finite limits. Kappa geometric morphism means it should preserve limits uh, whose, whose diagram has cardinality less than kappa. And kappa geometric morphisms from I just take it for set because that's not where my theorem comes from, but generalize this. To the class by corpus of some T is the same as the model of this. And now if I have a construction from T's to <coughs> from, from S models, uh, from T models to S models like this, as we have in this uh, in, the, in the hypothesis of my theorem. Yeah, but we can ask whether this is given by just post-composing the geometric morphism like this. And the hypothesis that I imposed are exactly ensuring that. Yeah, that we wanted lambda accessible objects to be preserved and this whole thing to preserve lambda with that code. So that's that's what it means that my uh, functor from T models to S models comes from a map of purposes between these class purposes of the theories. Now I can factorize these maps. And here we'll factorize the purposes in the middle. Yeah, we have this uh, surjection. So uh, dense inclusion, close inclusion factorization. And people have figured out what are the geometric theories occurring here again. Yeah? All of these are um, axiomatic extensions of, of their theory or the same signature, just satisfying possibly more axioms. And so, how, how does this actually work? I should maybe say uh, the word. So, there's a universal model. Of this theory T in here, and it gets sent to F upper star of M T. And I just transform this model along my the left adjoint of my unit morphism back to sets, and there I get my, my model. So S prime is the unit theory of the upper star of the S model. Yeah, so I, my, the model will live here, so I have a, a, a junction, and the upper part is this way, and then my universal S model becomes a more particular S model living in this compass. It's constructed of my, of my universal T model. And this here is the theory of all the geometric sequence satisfied by that model. And this here is theory of negations. This is uh, for usual geometric theories. This is long well, known, more or less. But although I don't, I mean, it's not so written down anywhere too concretely. But you can find it in Rebecca Hamilton's book. What are these theories in the middle? Now it also works for couple geometric theories. Uh, actually, I don't know that. Sorry, <laughs> I know it for for my setting. <laughs> yeah, maybe for this. in general, it's, it's clear that this is. A theory. Or geometric formulas and theories. Okay, so now in general, these factorizations are hard to define. Yeah? So we have an adjunction here, and for example, this 
topos in the middle is the topos of co-algebras for the co-monad that comes from this junction here, so it's something complicated. Uh, but so sorry. What was the theory of negations again? It's a theory consisting of, of the axioms of S plus all uh, negations. Well, the axioms, sorry, the axioms. Did I switch the order? I don't know. The, uh, all the negations of geometric. Couple geometric formulas here. Here, here couple geometric formula to the bottom. Wait, uh, what are the original? Where does phi come from? Which theory does it come from? No, no, it's just any geometric formula. I can ask whether it holds or does not hold for this model here. Mm -hmm. This transported universal model from here to there. Ah, and if it holds, I put it in the theory. Mm -hmm. Weird. <laughs> okay, so here is the thing why the so, uh, theorem came about. Factorization is easy, so it's, in general it's complicated, but it's easy if these are pre sheet purposes. Then I have a functor this way given by precomposition. Let's call this, I don't know, little g, and this is blank precomposed with g. Let's give us a functor this way, and it has a <coughs> right Khan extension, and this together makes up the uh, geometric morphism. And now for this, uh, and also the joint work with the Eduardo Ox. That factorization is easy, namely factorization is induced by by factorization systems that we have on categories. Yeah, so we can first let's call it this G. First take the essential image of our functor, so close it up on the isomorphisms if you want. Uh, then, right. So just take the objects. This, this should be a full subcategory of G. Yeah. Just take the objects that appear in the in the image of G, but take all the morphisms that are there in G. And now here, let's call this D prime. We take D prime to be all those maps which. Uh, all those objects which admit a map to the edge of D. Full subcategory of D <coughs> such that uh, there's a morphism to some D, D of C. So that is the factorization if you are, if you start with such a geometric morphism induced by by functor between the small index categories. And these fun yeah, functors of the theorem are of this kind that's somewhat ensured by the hypothesis. That's a sketch of proof in this time. Thank you. So where where is this item complete uh, statement? Well the question is whether such a functor uh, induces an isomorphism of pre-shift categories, and that is precisely the case if, if these are have the same eigenvalue completions. Right. You can you can reconstruct a little category out of this pre-shift category up to eigenvalue completions. Yeah, yeah. Just take the tiny objects in, in this pre-shift category, and then you get something. This is also. Sorry. Is this Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, so. I've once wondered about these kind of questions for higher order theories. I don't know if you know anything about that. I have no idea whether. I mean, this, these factorization theorems are about geometric morphisms, and geometric morphisms play well with first order theories, and yeah. coupled geometric theories. 
By the way, this kappa is okay for us because we form these things with the right kind of tangent, so this preserves all limits actually. But uh, this thing has left and right kind extensions, I mean, and so the, these uh, adjoint, well, this inverse image part preserves all limits, which is kappa limits, so this is why we have better clear this. And it's, this really made a basic difference because uh, the categories of interest for me are not finitely accessible. That's, as I said, it's a bit of a mystery when you have finitely accessible categories, and those would be categories of models of the theory of pre sheaf type. That's sort of an unsolved thing, but uh, if you go to couple of theories, you really can treat all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? I just a little technical question. Uh, maybe you said this already. Um, in this diagram at the bottom left, there is um, the map from G C to D prime, and the map and the area from D prime to D are those included. Yes. These, well, that's of course the that's 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 image, and these are uh, right. full subcategories in their flows. <coughs> so uh, maybe you said it already. Uh, but it might have my attention set of a theory. What is this? It's the classifier topos of that theory. It's, well, it's in, in general the classifier topos of the theory. Ah. So it's in general not, uh, not so easy to define. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but it's, it, you can define by this uh, property, just. Yeah. And then, of course, it's not clear that it exists, but it does. <laughs> it's kind of the representing object of it. Yes. Factor. Yeah. Yes. On the yes. Yeah. But yeah. but mod functor, so I should then add another variable. Mod functor here and set. I can look at the models in any topos. Yeah. And then it's a functor, and then this is a representing object of that functor. Yes. This is why I think there should be some constructive content in here, but I didn't explore it because I have a classical problem that I really want to solve. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit uh, concerned about this simplification. If you were very double negation, I would have bought it. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not. Uh, you mean this is the theory of negations of credit cards? Intuitively, yeah. only intuitively, I'm puzzled by this, but I don't understand the details. So. Yeah, so actually, it's, uh, it's not hard to see for the case of theories of pre sheaf type that this is, uh, that is what this theory is. But it's only, it's maybe easier to see it as negative statements. You look at the negative statements that are true. Yeah. yeah. The, the negative ones which are true, or the negations which are true. Yes, yeah, negations which are true, yeah. Uh, negations are a statement of their double negation. Yes. That is right. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Then let's call it a day and thank Peter again.